What happened? Oh no! We're supposed to be reviewing it for Banggood. Guys, we got a new toy! And this is a tiny little brushless helicopter that is supposed to be crazy fast. So in this video, we're going to unbox it, set it up and take it for its first flight and hopefully not break it. And this being a 3D helicopter means you can fly it upside down, you can cut the grass, you can do all your loops and rolls and all that stuff. So we're going to try all that, but for now, let's waffle and get it unboxed. Oh, check it out guys, it looks so cute. So this thing is made almost entirely out of carbon fibre and aluminium, carbon fibre side frames, carbon fibre tail, aluminium boom, aluminium head and aluminium servos. And here look, we've got a direct drive motor. And the good thing with that is there's no gears, so when you crash you won't strip anything. And then we've got another brushless motor at the rear, and the good thing about that is there's no belt, there's no pulleys, there's no gears or anything. When you crash, there's not really much to break. So in the box you get the heli, lipo, spare shaft, instructions, but you do need to supply your own radio gear and I'm going to use this Spectrum DX8 with a satellite receiver. So the direct drive is a similar idea what's used on this goblin here but check this out guys the OMP is even smaller. Oh guys my heli addiction is getting bad again. Oh look more helis, more helis, more helis. This one here is an Align T-Rex 450. I used to fly this as my main go-to heli many years ago it's probably had over a hundred crashes but it still works so we should really get this out again at some point. Hopefully setting this up for my Spectrum radio isn't going to be too hard. So next we've got to bind it to the radio, set it all up and then we can give it its first go. So first we're going to get the old blades off so that we can set it up and the whole thing doesn't spin up in our hands. I've been trying to bind it up with the Spectrum DX8, this is the new one and I just could not get it to work. Let's see if we can get it to work with the old one. <laughs> yes! It works! This one here actually runs on the DSM-2. I've got a DSM-2 satellite on the bottom here and I bound it up on this orange receiver here. Then took the satellite, plugged it into there and it all works. Look, check it out. So next, we've got to put the right settings into the radio, put the blades on and then we can go and fly it. So I've just got it all set up. A quick look into my settings. The servo, I've just left it normal. Dual rate and expo, I don't like any of that so I've left that normal. Throttle cut, I've assigned it to this switch here. Throttle curve, I've done it zero. And then the rest of them 60% on normal. And then on stunt mode one, 80% across the board. And then stunt two, 100% across the board. This dude here actually done the frontal curve. And if you want to do that, you can. But I just opted to go for a straight line. Reason being is that there's actually some delay when you put the throttle on. So, you know, when you're stick banging it, it's not going to respond quick enough to like a U or V curve anyway. So I'll just, I'll just like a straight line, especially on smaller helicopters. On bigger helicopters, we run a governor. Swash plate, normal. Gyro, don't touch that. Governor, don't touch that. Pitch curve, I just like to keep it from zero to 100% linear across all modes. Some people they like to go into normal and they make a different pitch curve but I don't like to do that because then when you flick through different modes the helicopter can start jumping about in the air and sometimes you can even smash it into the floor so I like it all to be linear and predictable. Tail curve normal, mixing normal, yeah all normal normal. Alright let's get the blades back on and then we'll take it out for a whip. So let's give it a quick hover in here. That was a quick, brief flick onto stunt mode one. You wait till we get it into number two, guys. This thing's gonna go to the moon. All right, let's waffle. Let's go fly it. What do you reckon of that, Mark? It's beautiful. It's a lovely machine. You having a go? Um, well, I can't wait to see you fly it. All right, I'll have a go first, and Mark's gonna have a go. I can't have a 10 second hover on it. Ah! Oh! It's a bit windy now, too. That's all right, I'm not in it, am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna have a go first, and then um, you lot can have a go if you want. He knows I'm not in it. <laughs> all right, here we go, wish me luck. We've already crashed one helicopter today, so we're gonna try and make this one nice. Oh, the wind's picking up. Oh, the tail motor's a bit, a bit weak. If you go mad on the pitch, the tail can't hold it. <laughs> Inverted circuit, it's close to the floor, so I can get it. Go go. I won't break it. Oh! Go on. Give it hell. I would, Kev, but I'd have to um, fly on lower um, pitch because otherwise the tail would kick out the hell I'd give it. All right, yeah, all right, do that then. Probably down to like 80, I reckon. Oh, sorry, the trouble is, guys, when we've got too much pitch on here, the little tail row I can't keep up, and that's when it spins out. So we've got to put the pitch down. It wasn't 80. Now we're going for we're going for a 70. I'm going to try 70. 
So I was going to quickly interrupt you there, and I just want to quickly let you know what we're talking about when we're talking about pitch. So on these stunt helicopters, they've got a variable pitch head. So when you're flying right side up, the blades are facing this way around, and then when you go upside down, the blades go that way around. The trouble is, the more pitch you give to blades, the more torque there is trying to pull the helicopter around. And that gives the tail rotor a much harder job trying to keep the helicopter in a straight line. If the torque on the head exceeds the, the opposite torque that this can give, then it's going to start spinning around in circles. So often, the smaller helicopters that have got the fixed pitch in the direct drive tail rotor, they have a tough time trying to compensate for the pitch here. So we have to go into our radio, and we have to limit the pitch so that it doesn't give it so much. And then, hopefully, if we get it set up right, the tail's going to hold. So then we can punch it up and down, and the tail's just going to be locked in solid. Otherwise, it's going to be wagging around and spinning around crazy in circles. <laughs> Has that tail still got a mind of its own? 55, I reckon. Okay. Yeah? Oh, 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 hell! Oh, 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 hell! How? What? How did you save that? Oh, tumble wumble. What did you do, Mark? What happened? Oh, no. You're supposed to be reviewing it for Banggood. All right, next heli. Mark? Yeah. What happened there? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was like um, losing control of heli trying pyro flips. Oh, <laughs> what heli hit here? Um, it was the. Was it that one? <laughs> it's all repaired again. Look at the dent it made. Look at the state of that. I might imagine if it was your head. <laughs> that would be bad if it was your head. So it did fly really nice, really stable, really locked in. It was quite capable, but if you start pushing it really hard, the, this little direct drive tail rotor, it has a hard time of keeping the tail locked in. I think we're probably running a little bit too much pitch. So we put the pitch down, it does make it a lot better, but you can't beat a proper driven tail like we see on this goblin here. But a good thing with this is, it's a low parts count, so when you crash it, there's not really that much to go wrong. So we've got a broken blade, bent boom, broken tail rotor, a couple of broken servo links. This will just clip back on. And other than that, it looks good to go. So we're going to get it fixed again and get it back up in the air. And by the way, if you want to know where you can get it from, link down below. We're going to try this one here out in a future video. This is cheaper and it might even be better. And I've just been building a Kraken 580. I'm just waiting for servos and then we're going to get that up in the air as well. So subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss it. I'll see you over on one of these videos here.